Welcome back everyone. In this lesson we're going to add squash and stretch to the ball bounces. Let's go ahead and get set up for that. I'm going to stop my animation, center up my viewports, and come back here to frame one. So what we're going to do is set up some animation layers so that we can separate out our squash and stretch and have a little bit more control over that. Right now we've got display layers over here in the channel box and layer editor. If we click over here on animation, we don't see any layers right now, but we're going to go ahead and create those. So if we just go ahead and uh, select on this, the main one, this is going to be our base animation right here. So you'll see that I just clicked on that. I've got my base animation, which is right here. And then if I click up here on animation layer one, which it also created, there's no animation when we select any of these controllers right here, including the main controller. So the main controller is considered the base animation. That's everything that we have keyframe thus far. So for our animation layer one, this is going to be our squash and stretch right here. So I just uh, shift selected those. So I selected the top one. I'm holding down the shift key and I'm selecting the bottom one as well. I want to just establish a keyframe here on our animation layer one. So make sure you're on this layer here. And we'll go ahead and hit S on the keyboard. And we can see that we have our first keyframe right here on frame one. So let's go ahead and advance down the timeline to frame 14, which is our first ball bounce. And from here, we're going to actually select the bottom one. So this should be control bottom since we've done a 180 rotation. And we're going to add some squash on that. It's automatically created a keyframe. And we can see this now building in our graph editor. I'm going to hit F on here to frame up on it. So we can see our first two keyframes in here. And right now, if we back this up, we can see that it's not quite working right. So we have some more keyframing to do here. Let's back it up one frame. If we look at our ball bounce example with squash and stretch, we can see that the ball is most extreme in its stretch the frame before it hits the ground where it squashes. So we're going to add that now by pulling up on here. We're also going to angle this a little bit. And we'll try to make it somewhat even. So we've already created a keyframe in here. I'm going to go ahead and hit F so we can see that. So we've got our squash and our stretch. Now if we back up here, we can see that it's, it's stretching in the wrong direction. So we don't really want our stretch to start until it rotates down to right about here. So I'm going to zero this out by selecting both channels in the channel box typing in zero and hitting enter. And now when we back up to frame one, we can see that it's holding its position. And then as it begins to pick up speed, it stretches and then it hits the ground and it squashes. To help us visualize this more and to see our arcs, I'm going to select the main controller. I'm going to come up to visualize and I'm going to select create editable motion trail. So now we've got a guideline here to see the angle that our ball needs to be at as it's stretching. Right now I overshot that a little bit so I'm going to just bring it back. Now that we have the motion trail in here we can see the angle of our arcs and align our ball with that. So I'm just adding some additional keyframes in here because we do have that rotation happening. Okay, so there's our first ball bounce right there with squash and stretch. And now when the ball takes off for the second ball bounce, this is where we're going to also see the most extreme stretching on it. So I'm going to stretch this up. And it looks like it's in pretty good alignment. I'll just tweak that a little bit to angle it correctly. Let's go ahead and slide these down here so we can see this a little bit better. And then as the ball comes up to the top here, we've got that rotation, of course, but we want to go ahead and zero it out. 
probably about here. So I'm going to zero these out in the channel box. That's on frame 17. And I'm going to come back here and do a little bit of angling here just to help this. And actually, I think this one can angle in a little bit more like that. So I just added a keyframe there. So we're going to have to come back and check to make sure that we don't need to put a second keyframe in there. This is our first keyframe on the top controller. And here we probably need to zero that out. So we'll put zero in there. All right, so that's working. So let's continue on down here. So it's going to hold in this position here as it rotates around. So it has no squash and stretch on it still. Let's go ahead and bring it all the way down to the ground here. I want to straighten this out now. So this will be zeroed out on the Translate Z for the top one. We're going to select this one and squash it down. This will be less than the first ball bounce with the squash on it because it is losing energy. Just as the ball bounces get smaller, the squash will reduce down as well. We'll bring it down to, I've got it at 0.275. Let's go ahead and back up one frame. So this is where it's going to stretch. It's going to stretch about the same amount. And it's also going to angle. I'm going to go ahead and just type that in there. It's a 0.7275. Okay, let's go ahead and make some adjustments here. So we're going to have to add another keyframe to zero everything out here. So I'm going to grab both these channels here, zero those out. And right here, I think we need to angle this a little bit, as well as the bottom one here. That's actually the top one. It's facing on the bottom because of the rotation. And we just want to make sure that it's following that motion path. OK, so now that we've completed that ball bounce, as the ball comes up again, this is where it's going to stretch. So we're going to stretch that. And it should be less now. So again, it's losing some energy. I'm at 0.195. The angle looks good here. Let's move forward. So I'm going to zero it out here with both channels and let it continue that loop here. And this will be the last one. So this is going to be pretty minimal as it's coming down. So we'll take it all the way down to the ground here. We're grabbing the top controller now. We're squashing it. So this will be even less. So I'm at 0.15. There we go. And we're going to back up a frame to add the stretch now. And it should be right about the same. So we'll just go ahead and type that in here, 0.15. And that seems to be following the path as well. So that looks good. So right around here, I still see some squash and stretch. So let's go ahead. It's because it's on the other controller. Let's make sure we're zeroed out here. So we're at, uh, it's still got some squash and stretch here. So let's go back. Uh, this is because we've got the other controller. So I'm going to zero this out here as well. And we'll probably zero it out right here on this frame as well. OK, and then we start to see the stretch happen here. It increases, and then it squashes down. 
and then we'll stretch it here one last time. So this will be even less, so it's about half of what it was. Okay, and then we'll bring it up to here, and then we're going to zero this out. <clears throat> Let's check the bottom one to make sure it's zeroed out, and it is. So we should be good here with our ball bounces, adding squash and stretch. Go ahead and frame up on that. I'm going to back it out here. I'm going to slide this over just so we can see the whole ball bounce. And we'll go ahead and play that. All right, so we've added squash and stretch in here. And we'll come back in one last lesson where we'll set up our scene to do a play blast.